News 46 is brought to you by Bees Embroidery and Garment Printing, specializing in custom and personalized decoration of gifts, garments, and more. Call 775-727-9444. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight on News 46, the investigation is underway for a home fire. And officials hold a meeting to help rural homeowners. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Pahrump Valley Farm Rescue gives updates on a home fire. It's Wednesday, June 20th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. More details are released regarding Monday night's fire on Calvada Boulevard. We were dispatched to the fire as a structure fire. Uh, on arrival, we found the fire to be contained to the attic. Uh, we stretched our lines, were able to contain the fire, and uh, assisted the patient. She was approximately 70 years old, had just uh, been rehabbing from a serious medical event, and suffered a little bit of smoke inhalation. Uh, she refused transport or treatment on the scene. She was the only occupant inside the home at the time. She describes what she thought was someone walking on her roof and was able to get out of the house. Uh, to my knowledge, she was assisted by another individual. I had uh, gotten out of work early that day for a doctor's appointment, and I had just gotten out of it and was on my way back down Calvada when I uh, I had seen the white smoke coming up from the right side of the road there. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, you know, it's probably somebody just burning some brush in their backyard because, you know, you, you never want it to be somebody's house on fire. And I was driving further and further down Calvada and you could see that the smoke was building not you know, dwindling down like somebody was burning something and uh, I had actually gotten just about parallel with the house and I could see the smoke was coming off of the roof and uh, the two little ventilation sha the shafts they have there on the roof I mean it looked like a fire shot right up out of both of them there and that's you know you're like oh crap somebody's house is on fire and uh, I did a UE on the road and got into the gravel and cut up the gravel to get in front of her house. And as soon as I stopped and actually got on the phone with 911, she, you know, she, the lady comes to the door and she's, she looked at me and I motioned at her to get out of her house and she, so she yelled at me, she said, my house on fire, is my house on fire? And I told her, yeah, your, your, your roof is smoking pretty, pretty hard there, I need you to get out of there. And, uh, and she did and she's panicking. and. 911 was talking to me about that and I uh, I told her you know it's like you got to calm down is there anybody else in the house is there any animals anything you're aware of uh, she said she only had a dog in the backyard and I asked, of course I asked her what kind of dog because you know, 911 wanted to make sure and uh, she told me a Rottweiler and you're thinking oh oh boy I don't want to deal with a panic in Rottweiler but uh, Ruby her Rottweiler turned out to be a big old sweetheart cause of the fire is still under investigation we're, we're unsure at this time she didn't see flames in the inside her residence she says she did not have any smoke until she opened the front door uh, saw the smoke near the front door and that's when she saw the passerby and asked for assistance in getting the rest of the way out of the home quite a bit of damage the fire was able to burn through the entire attic before we were able to suppress it based on the fact that it had probably been burning for a, a little while before anybody even knew we we had the road closed due to the fact we had um, connected to a fire hydrant that was across the street, so we closed the roads to keep vehicles from running over the hose. Well, the girlfriend of a man indicted in connection with a deadly shooting last month reported to uh, police that he came to her home and told her he possibly killed a guy. Dennis Keith Dillard Jr., who is 50 years old from Pahrump, was found on May 21st with multiple gunshot wounds inside his SUV at the 4900 block of Rogers Street near Tropicana and Arville in Las Vegas. Dillard later died at University Medical Center. 
35-year-old Joel Serrano and 29-year-old Catherine Hay were arrested days later after Henderson police received a call from Serrano's girlfriend who said that Serrano had stolen her gun and vehicle and might have committed a murder. Serrano and Hay were indicted by a grand jury on June 15th. They face one count each of conspiracy to commit robbery, robbery with a deadly weapon, and murder with a deadly weapon. Surveillance video showed a man and a woman at the scene before and after Dillard's SUV rolled out of the parking lot and then crashed on Bond Street. Detectives found a trail of blood at the scene that they believe a woman suspect may have been injured at the scene. Serrano's girlfriend said that the two showed up at her house and admitted that something went sideways, according to the suspects. She showed up the arm of Hayes at the scene. News 46 has learned that Hay has worked as a prostitute named Gloria Gags at Dennis Hoff's Area 51 Alien Cat House and then the Bunny Ranch in the past. Hay and Serrano are under house arrest awaiting an initial arraignment on Thursday. Fire Chief Scott Lewis talks about this morning's vehicle fire on Black Street. Just after 8.30 this morning, we were dispatched for a report of an unknown type fire producing thick black smoke. As our crews arrived on location, their investigation revealed that we had a fully involved vehicle that was under various states of condition. They were actually grinding on it, uh, which precipitated the fire. The fire had also extended to the nearby grounds cover and also to a outbuilding, which happened to be a shed. So the, the shed destroyed as well? No, the shed was not destroyed. It was protected by the crews on their arrival, quickly extinguished the vehicle fire, extinguished the ground cover, and protected the shed. So what do you mean grinding on it? Is that um, where they're working on the vehicle? They were. They were actually converting it to a different type of vehicle, they're customizing it, if you will. And so they were using a grinder, which then you know, actually set the uh, nearby ground cover on and the vehicle on fire. We've had this incident happen before and actually um, caused quite a bit of damage. What should a person do when they're working with uh, tools like this that might cause some sparks? Yeah, the things we want to consider is making sure the ground cover has been eliminated from the area. It's, it's dry or bare dirt. Also, make sure you're away from any structures or other exposures. And if there's any winds or any other indicators weather-wise that it could promote a fire, cease to do it. Maybe even have a hose or a bucket of water there. Bucket yeah. of water help sometimes a little bit more because then you don't have to run over to the spigot. Yeah, in this case, there, there was a garden hose in close proximity. And it's just a matter of by the time the garden hose got energized and it was also then uh, spreading. More local news right after this break.